Can supplementing CO2 impact the bun density at all? It definitely can. Uh, there's a couple of things that you would want to have in place for CO2 use. Um, I guess I'll just touch on that first. Um, you know, you, you want kind of a sealed environment. Um, a lot of us exhaust the areas where uh, our gardens are. Um, if you're just quickly turning that out every 30 seconds to a minute, it might not be as beneficial as if you slowed that down or it was a sealed environment where it kind of recycled that. Um, there is a benefit either way, whether it's sealed or not. And uh, you also need to have a powerful enough light powerful enough light again we're going back to intensity and we're going to go back to temperature because yes co2 can help build denser buds uh it increases the uh or it opens the stomata which you know allows for more co2 uptake which again transpiration more nutrients but it also accelerates photosynthesis and that's really the driving factor behind all of this that's why we want the intense light it's because we want to create photosynthesis it's going to help uh, cells multiply a little bit faster than if you didn't have co2 and all of this is just kind of a it's that last little five percent on your gas pedal it's like you're almost to the floor you've got everything cruising down the freeway perfectly and you just hit it and you just sink a little bit lower and you take off. What are some ways that home growers can supplement CO2 without breaking the bank? Right. Um, you know, I am talking a lot, <laughs> whether it be on a webcast, on a phone. Uh, so sometimes if you're in a small enough room, just ambient levels. Uh, if, if you talk a lot or if you like to sing to your plants, you can increase CO2 in a meaningful way there. Uh, there are also... Um, bottles that you could get small canisters almost like the size of a two liter or um you know smaller that you can use be careful with co2 it is a toxic deadly gas if it accumulates uh in, in a large enough amount it likes to sit low to a floor so if you're using it definitely have uh, monitors uh, but one of the most popular things or common things i see amongst um, you know hobby growers is mushroom bags something like that in their tent uh, they just kind of hang it up high kind of let it fall down over the canopy and that's that's typically the uh, most common one I see okay and then what about the tanks you know you hear people going to the hydro store and lugging yeah. tanks in and out of their house and then put in that grow space would you recommend uh, against doing that is mushroom bags better or what right. Um, you know, in a sealed environment with the tanks, you're able to control it. You're able to set kind of a target, whereas with the bags, you're just like taking what you get. Uh, it's going to, you know, probably start off high and then decrease over time a lot faster than a tank where you could set it at a particular level. Um, you know, really the size of the garden, I think, would, would dictate something like that. Um, a lot of hobbyists typically don't need that some people who um you know have have a different garden or you know maybe medicinal gardens something with a little bit more power it, it, it could benefit them it's worth it if you meet all the other conditions but again if you don't have you know light intensity you're not going to benefit yourself because uh, you need to run the plants hotter or the room a little bit hotter when you're running co2 so to summarize all those things swirling in my head right now. <laughs> Good points. I've used the mushroom bags as well as the canisters in the past. Both of those have worked to increase the CO2 level in my environment. But uh, surprisingly, so I do have a CO2 monitor in my grow at all times. And uh, surprisingly, every time I go in there, it's like over 800. And I'm thinking about why would that be? Why would that be? And a lot of things that people don't think about is... I live in the house that I grow in. So like I'm exhaling CO2. My girlfriend is exhaling CO2. My three cats are exhaling <laughs> CO2. And when you've got that intake coming, right? So you're exhausting the air out of the grow space, bringing in fresh air. I'm doing it passively. And there's fresh CO2 coming in at all times. Yeah. And it keeps it up 800 plus. Just about every time I go in there, it's 800 plus. So Perfect. I feel like I don't need to supplement CO2 anymore. I mean, I've tried it. It's, it's helped and so on and so forth. But I'm at the point where I'm such a small home grower, only growing six to 12 plants at a time. I feel like I don't need to spend that extra money on supplementation that my air that I'm exhaling is, is providing enough. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, I said I I agree commercially. And commercially, if you have, you know, a large nursery and you're able to increase yield by, say, two grams per plant, for me and you, for the hobbyists, not really a big deal, might not be worth the cost or the expense. But when you do that on scale times 20, 30, 40, 50,000, that adds up real quickly. So again, it's kind of one of those last little things that you, you can toy around with, And in my opinion. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrowAt15 to save on any of their products. 